So this past spring, Bones and I did a Kickstarter to print one of our comics, and yesterday I got to go and see the proof copy, and I'm so excited! Uh, so today I wanted to talk about preparing a comic for print versus preparing a comic to post online. So I know when I was first getting into webcomics, I had, like, zero knowledge about printing versus online stuff. Um, I set up a lot of my comic page files, like, horribly wrong. So I guess I wanted to give a little overview about ways to make things way easier on yourself when you're starting out. So I guess I'll go over my process. So all of my working files are set to high DPI. DPI means dots per inch. Uh, it refers to how many pixels are on your canvas per inch. So for black and white comics, I tend to do 600 DPI. Uh, this will help for if you decide to print your black and white comic. And for color comics, I do 350 DPI. You don't really need to go higher than that. And the lowest you can safely go would probably be 300 DPI. The reason there's a difference, I think, is just black and white, especially if you're going like really line heavy, you'll get these really crisp lines, whereas with color, you don't need quite as much DPI to still get that clear image. I also set up all my canvases to be about 2,000 to 3,000 pixels wide, and that's just the working file, like when you uh, post online. So say you've got your comic page, you've set up this really like big, pretty file. So when you're posting online, you'll want to make the size of your comic smaller. Uh, and by that, I mean like the file size. Because when you're posting it online, you'll want the page to load quickly. So if it's this huge file size, it will not load quickly and readers will be deterred. So uh, you'll want to bring it down to 72 DPI, uh, the typical web and screen resolution. Um, I tend to go for like 100 dpi sometimes, um, but it really doesn't make a difference when you're posting it for screens. Um, you also want to make it smaller so that it's not this like big huge wide file. Uh, I usually go for like between 600 to 800 pixels wide. So that's for posting it on the web. When you're getting your files ready for print, you'll want to keep them at that big file size so that when they print onto a smaller size, they will look crisp and like condense nicely. Another thing I had to learn with getting comics ready for print was the difference between color modes. So the difference between web comics and print comics is definitely the color mode. The color mode you'll want for um, anything that will be displayed on a screen is RGB, and anything that you're getting ready for print will be CMYK. So if you don't know the difference, RGB is it stands for red, green, blue, which are the colors that show on a screen. So with RGB, you can get these really vivid bright colors. On screens, you can do like virtually any color. There's so much diversity with uh, within RGB. However, if you're getting something ready for print, you'll want to turn it into CMYK or even have it as CMYK from the get-go, seeing as a screen can display those colors. And when you print, those colors can be displayed. Um, so also, if you don't know, CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Those are the colors of ink that any printer uses. They'll use any combination of those four colors to create the colors on the page, which means that your colors are a lot more limited uh, when you print. So you'll really want to account for that because if you go with these like bright neon colors and then you try to print them, they're going to turn out gray and brown and muddy. Here's one thing I learned when I was working on this new print comic. For all my comics, <laughs> I generally use Clip Studio Paint, also known as Manga Studio, which is a really great program for making comics. It's got a lot of tools that are like laid out for you for like paneling and inking and all that great stuff. However, it does not handle CMYK. You can output RGB files in a CMYK format, but the colors don't actually show up as they'll print. Oh my god, I went looking through tutorials about like how to fix it, and in the end I just had to redo a bunch of my pages in Photoshop, which actually shows you the CMYK values. The nice thing about Photoshop is it'll warn you when you are using a color that is outside of CMYK if you have your canvas set to CMYK mode. So that saved my butt so much from choosing the wrong colors. So yeah, don't shoot yourself in the foot. 
use your high DPIs and check your colors. <laughs> um, some other nifty stuff I've learned about uh, the difference between print and webcomics. There's been a trend recently with webcomics where people will break the panels apart. Instead of having them like laid side by side really tightly on a page, people will stack them vertically. So they'll take one panel and like put it at the top and then put some white space and then put another panel. If you read webtoons or Topastic, you will see this everywhere. It's kind of like the new webcomic format. It works really well for phones and mobile because you can just scroll down instead of having to zoom in onto every panel and then zoom out to go to the next one. Meanwhile, if you're working for print, there are set sizes for pages that you have to work within. So that's kind of like the traditional comic page that has all the panels on the same page, generally packed together tightly depending on how many panels you have. So I hope that's helped people who are confused. Um, I'm sure I could do a much longer video about this, so this is just my quick overview of everything. When I started like making prints and trying to do print comics, I made a lot of stupid mistakes, so hopefully this will save some of you who are looking into it right now. That's all I have for today. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!